mankind needs to move forward, you know, and we're not going to be moving forward as so long as, as NASA keeps us living in this fantasy world. Ladies and gentlemen, we know of America! These guys are not going to deter me from, from completing my objective, and that's proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that the moon missions were faked. And, I've, you know, it's an ongoing battle to the finish, I guess, and I'm going to continue doing that until I either die or, or NASA publicly acknowledges that the moon missions were faked. You know, I, I am not afraid to die for the sake of the truth, and if I have to put my life on the line to just to get to the, to the truth, then so be it. It's going to be quite a show, I can promise you that. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Banal of America Audio, with your host, Tim Banal. What is going on, my friends? This is Tim Banal of BanalofAmerica.com, with another edition of BOA Audio Season 6. Lots of in-house notes to discuss, but we're going to save those for the end of the program, because I don't want to bore people who've been waiting way too long for this episode, and... In the future, these in-house notes will make no sense at all. So tune in to the end of the program if you want to find out what's going on with these technical difficulties we've had the last few weeks. And before we dive into this week's edition of the program, of course, we got to give kudos and thanks to Peter Diggins, who supplied the theme music for this week's installment of BOA Audio. You can find out more from him at www.orophonic.com. And that's spelled A-U-R-O-P-H-O-N-I-C dot com. If you're a musician out there and you want to contribute a song to BOA Audio for a future installment of the program, you can do that by writing to BOA Audio at Hotmail.com, and I'd be happy to give your tunes a listen. Now, let's get down to business on this edition of BOA Audio as we return to the realm of the moon hoax theory with our guest, Jera White known as the grandson of Moon Hoax Theory. Chances are, if you listen to this, you've heard a lot of paranormal audio over the years, and you've heard the Moon Hoax Theory discussed and dissected countless times. I know I have. So I went into this conversation with Gerald White with a whole different perspective. I really wanted to explore the world of Moon Hoax Theory. How did it start? How did it evolve? And... Why is it so potent on both sides of the argument? Those are sort of the areas we're going to be covering here in this conversation. Jero is going to tell us about the man who really kicked off Moon Hoax Theory, Bill Casing, and then the man who he turned the baton over to, Ralph Rene, and how those two men led to Jero White becoming the grandson of the Moon Hoax Theory. We're going to really get into what is, I think, one of the most fascinating aspects of the moon hoax theory and that is the passionate stances taken by both sides of the moon hoax debate the people who insist we went to the moon and the folks who are adamant that we did not they are both just fired up about their sides in this argument more so than almost any other paranormal genre so that's fascinating to me and we're going to explore that with Gerald White because really he has become the face and voice of moon hoax theory here in the new millennium. Speaking of these vitriolic stances from both sides of the moon hoax debate, we're going to hear about Jera's encounters with Phil Plate, the Mythbusters, and Buzz Aldrin. He's confronted all these folks with serious questions about the moon landing, and you're going to find out about how those encounters went down. We're also going to explore conspiracies surrounding the Apollo 1 and Challenger shuttle disasters. And we'll get into the meta levels of the moon hoax theory debate, including why in 2011, whether or not we went to the moon still matters. Why is this a huge issue anymore? It was 40 plus years ago. We're going to get into all that, plus tons and tons more. Really a slew of challenging questions covering this most peculiar genre of esoterica. It really is one of the more odd corners in the world of the paranormal. And altogether, it is an edition of BOA Audio that takes a fair look at an often dismissed and highly controversial area of the paranormal with the man who has championed it here in the new millennium, Jera White. Before we get to Jera's bio and background, I want to give props to Michael, a BOA Audio listener who wrote to us last year 
and suggested we have Jera on the program. As we say all the time here on the show, it is your program, my friends. BOE Audio belongs to the listeners. And once again, the influence of the audience is on display here with this installment of BOA Audio. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Jera White, allow me to provide you with a little background on him. Jera White is a native of Australia who debunks the Apollo hoax debunkers, both in forums and through film. He holds academic qualifications in film and TV at Sydney Institute of TAFE and is currently doing his BSc in astrophysics. Since 2006, he has produced over 300 videos on the subject of the Apollo moon hoax theory. These include the ongoing Moon Faker series, Flagging the Gems, and Apollo Zero. He is the contributing editor to MoonMovie.com and is considered by many to be the honorary heir of Ralph René, author of NASA Mooned America. He's got a new website coming out soon, maybe online by now. You can find that at www.MoonFaker.com. And you can check out a slew of his films at his YouTube channel, youtube.com slash whitejera, and you spell that white, W-H-I-T-E, and then J-A-R-R-A-H. Links all over Ben All of America, so be sure to check out his films on YouTube. And with all that said, let's get down to business, my friends, and rock and roll. This interview was recorded on March 26, 2011. Jera White, direct from Sydney, Australia talking about the moon hoax theory on BOA Audio Season 6. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of BOA Audio Season 6. And I'm sure we're about to embark on what is certainly going to be a controversial episode in a lot of ways, but I'm personally really looking forward to this conversation. Our guest calls himself the grandson of moon hoax theory, and... We'll get into that sort of affectation, if you will, in a little bit, but I I really think that that is certainly very apropos because he's really carrying on the tradition of moon hoax theory now. He certainly seems like the third generation of researchers here to really be a proponent of the moon hoax theory and challenge the mainstream perception of what happened there in the late 1960s. And he's doing a fantastic job of it, I'll give him that. Personally, I'm not a huge proponent of the moon hoax theory, but I leave the door open for it. And that's why we're having this conversation here on the show. And especially because I'm very interested in the moon hoax theory community and how this field has evolved over the years. And as I said, he really is sort of the cutting edge of moon hoax theory right now. He is the driving force behind the field in a big way. And he's really changed the way moon hoax theory is showcased with his amazing YouTube channel. You can find that at youtube.com slash whitejera. And actually, I should point out, too, that he is a guest who was requested by one of the BOA Audio listeners. So as we like to say from time to time here on the program, you know, you call out for the guests, and we'll bring them on the program to showcase their work and talk about their research. I've been sitting back and enjoying a lot of his films here for the better part of the last couple of days. There's like over 400 movies on his YouTube channel, not just dealing with the moon hoax theory, but dealing with other stuff as well, and really fantastically produced stuff. i got to give him credit for that. I mean, these are things that you could easily imagine seeing on television. They're very well made, so kudos to him. I'm talking about Jera White coming to us all the way from Sydney, Australia, 15 hours ahead of us. Hopefully tomorrow is looking good already. And I'm looking forward to talking to him and having him here on the program and delving into the moon hoax theory, and I hope... All you folks out there are going to come along for the ride as well. Jera, welcome to BOA Audio. It's a real thrill to have you on the program. It's good to be here. So on. Well, let's start out with the bio, the background. You know, who is Jera White, and how did you get turned on to the moon hoax theory? Well, when I was a when I was a, a young kid, you know, I was always interested in um in uh, in space and and uh, you know, space travel, exploration, that sort of stuff. And you know, I you know, I, I kept studying it well, well into my into my into my teenage years and stuff. And uh, you know, ultimately, I wanted to be an astronaut. You know, someday I wanted to be the first man on Mars. You know, because I looked up to these to these to these astronauts. You know, these um these guys who were you know said to have been been the the guys who went to the moon and all that. You know, and uh, you know, I, I, I studied the um, the Apollo program. I studied um, the the solar system, the um, the um, the galaxy, and everything else. But a few years later, right, this is like much much later right, in my um, much later in my life, I um, see this program about how 
you know, how they're saying that, the, okay, the moon missions were faked, and we all say, oh, this is interesting. This is interesting. Could this be, could this be true? So what I did, you know, I, initially I took it with a grain of salt, right? But um, I went back to everything I had previously learned about astronomy and astrophysics and stuff, and, uh, you know, I heard, I, I read, I read online, read into the, read into the books, the, um, the various videos and stuff that the, um, that the conspiracy theorists were putting out. And, um, you know, along the way, obviously as well, I came across all these, um, these pro NASA, these pro NASA websites. Mm -hmm. And, uh, what became pretty clear to me is that, um, uh, you know, compared to everything I, I knew, everything I I'd, had I'd learned since and, and so forth, it, it became pretty clear to me that um, these pro-NASA websites were essentially just propaganda sites. They, rather than, um, than, um, than actually disprove the argument, they bombard their readers with this, this pseudoscience garbage, and, and in, in, in turn as well, they also... Go out of their way to libel the um the 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 other side of the of the argument. You know, they go out to libel those those on who who were saying that this was all fake. You know, like essentially like putting words in their mouth or um or you know lying about their about their their background and and you know all that all that, all this all this um this uh, diatribe that's going on. And so I finally felt, look, it's time for some guys to you know stand up you know and um and finally show for what these propagandists really are. You know, they're just that they're just propagandists. That's all they ever say on the internet. It's just propaganda, and uh, so that's so. Initially, I started writing up this long, this, this enormous long essay. You know that I was going to be like posting on the Bill Casing tribute site. You know this long yeah, essay countering the thing, right? And uh, when I finally about uh, worked on it for about a year or so, and when I finally finished, I'm like, well, this thing's like you know bigger than a than a than a phone book. You know? <laughs> yeah. And plus, I needed yeah. Plus, I also needed to um turn back on some sort of um. And some less than less than polite things I had to say about the opponents, obviously. But um, so eventually, I decided, look, why don't you just um, just start take the take various pieces of it and just adapt it into um, into in, into into a video. You know, originally it was going to be one long video, but then I realized that would take you know way too long to cover in just one single film. So so what became of that was became the Moonfaker series. Just uh, each each series like delves into a specific topic, be it radiation or be it uh, uh, television broadcasts or 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 what. Or lighting, or whatever, and stuff, and so it's pretty much how they how the Moonfaker series came about. Okay, so you sort of got into this like in the last like five years or so, basically. Yeah, it was in the I first got involved in um, the first Moonfaker came out in um, 2006, and I've been um, been producing these videos videos um, uh, since then, you know, and uh, you know, shortly after the release of my first series, the um, the uh, lads from MoonMovie.com they um, they um, they saw my films and they said, "Hey, you, how would you like to you know to come to come work with us?" They had a um, a um, a project that they wanted that they were working on and stuff, and they asked, "Hey, would you like to help us put this together?" And I said, "Okay." And uh, so that field, that project was Apollo Zero, uh, which is a um, public domain film, and. Uh, over that time, uh, I also worked on the um, the gem series, which was basically a um, it was flagging the gems, and there was Apollo 11, the little gem, which was the um, former of which was this video that was proving that the Apollo Apollo 10 telecast, this was the mission before Armstrong, see before see they were, went to, they supposedly went to the moon to uh, try out the the lunar module and stuff, and yeah. they, during that mission they sent back a whole bunch of of television transmissions showing the Earth viewed from a distance and stuff. Well. I I got the I got the raw footage of this, you know, it was sold by the um by the group Spacecraft Films and stuff. And uh what I did I compared it to the um to the official transcript. And uh what it what it turned out is that, that the um the actual supposed live television transmissions and all that, they were in fact edited, you know, pre filmed and edited together. Because there'd be times when they're like looking back at the earth, okay, they're just like commenting on it and stuff. Then all of a sudden they the camera would just, just just cut from one angle to another, like okay, it would be be sort of zoomed out away from the earth, and suddenly it would cut to a to a closer image or 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 slightly off center image or whatever and stuff. Mm -hmm. And yet the audio would run would would still run continuous, you know, unedited, un, un um uninterrupted, I should say, you know. So basically, the audio was synced to this um to this edited footage. They only had one TV camera in the capsule, right? So there's no possible way that could happen. So I produced this um, video flag in the gems, and I posted it up on my on my old YouTube account. My old YouTube account was Dara White, you know. It's now White Dara. But see, what happened is that um, when when I posted this video, I also pointed out that pieces of existing Apollo 10 footage had been omitted from the so-called complete and unedited unedited spacecraft films DVD. 
And so I posted this video basically pointing this out. And uh, what happened, the guy who runs Spacecraft Films, a guy called Mark Gray, he um, he went in and filed copyright infringement against these, this, this video that I put out and got my account suspended, my old account. <laughs> and, you know, he, his, his claim is, his, his copyright claim is fraudulent because the footage in question is public domain. He's got no, he's got no copyright claim to it.